It's All Things Considered, and I'm Dave Lawrence. This Saturday night at the Hawaii Theater, Jefferson Starship performs. Original member Paul Kantner passed away in 2016, and the band he assembled has continued on, fronted by singer Kathy Richardson, who their website notes has been encouraged and supported by legendary Jefferson Airplane Jefferson Starship, former vocalist and songwriter Grace Slick. Today we're welcoming the group's senior member, multi-instrumentalist David Freiberg. And he not only has history in both Jefferson Airplane and Jefferson Starship, but was part of fellow San Francisco Bay Area group Quicksilver Messenger Service. David, thanks for taking time for us. No, no, no problem. Ironically, we had just had uh, the Hot Tuna guys in during the summer, so Jack and Yorma came through. Now you, Fantastic. You guys are here in December, so for curious folks, describe who is in the band in addition to yourself. Who is in this band? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> this is the band that Paul restarted Jefferson Starship. And this is everybody that was in the band when Paul passed away. So you've got on vocals, it's mm-hmm. Kathy Richardson is her name? Kathy Richardson is in there on vocals. She is fantastic. And in 1998, Chris Smith, the keyboard player, joined, which is probably the longest longest stretch that anybody's been in besides Paul. Right. Okay. And Donnie Baldwin, who was a drummer in 1982, I believe. And he, he was a drummer in Starship also. Right. And Jude Gold, he's the baby, probably coming on to eight years now. And that, that's it. One of the neat things about you is you've got a lot of history with the islands dating back to Quicksilver Messenger Service and going forward from there. We've got this listener, Steve, the mystery emailer, and it was like a small book that he sent relating to uh, <laughs> your... <laughs> so I just wanted to drop a couple on, on you because they sounded really interesting. Um, Probably remembers more sharply than I do. We, you never point. know. Sometimes people one-up Steve. We have uh, March 17th, 1970, Quicksilver Messenger Service make their Hawaii debut. They play Andrews Amphitheater. UH campus. I do remember that. That was the big band that had Nicky Hopkins in it. Too. Yeah, that's right. On the piano. Yeah, yeah. Then after that, we all loved Hawaii so much that somebody decided we were going to record in Hawaii. That's we were right. Make a record. <laughs> May 1st, 1970, up in Haleiwa. You guys go to the Opa. Haleiwa. Yeah, yep. Opai Lua the, Lodge. Opai Lua Lodge is this old Boy Scout camp that didn't have any electricity. <laughs> so we had to bring a generator up there. It also contains your best-known hit, Fresh Air, when you did that record, Just for Love. Yeah, the Just for Love, it does contain fresh air. You lived in I a country... I don't whether we actually recorded it there or not. You lived in a country house near the sugar cane fields. Looks like you stayed a month and a half here. Yeah, the first two weeks we're trying to get the generator grounded properly so we couldn't <laughs> do anything for two weeks. <laughs> the first two weeks. And you used your time well while you were here because June 7th, 1970, Quicksilver performs at the Summer Diamond Head Crater Festival along with the Steve Miller Band, Linda Ronstadt, and Big Brother and the Holding Company. In the, in the crater, yeah. I do remember that. And then just days later, June 12th and 13th, 1970, this is Quicksilver Messenger Service, Grateful Dead, and the New Riders of the Purple Sage doing two nights at the Honolulu Civic Auditorium. I do have slight memories of that one. Was that while we were making the record? They came out They came out to the lodge. <laughs> right. No, good point. What you're saying is both yeah. of those happened during the record. One of the things that a lot of people may not realize about David is when you were in Quicksilver, you were one of the two bands that shared the bill with the Grateful Dead more than anyone else. It was the airplane, ironically, and Quicksilver. Right. Well, in, in San Francisco itself, I guess we were the three biggest bands, really, the local bands at that point. Jefferson Airplane, of course, had made a record and everything, and Surrealistic Pillow, and the Grateful Dead had a record. We didn't have a record, which is why we never were big outside of town. <laughs> and that may have been the case, but interesting how these connections are so interwoven because you end up joining Jefferson Airplane and then being there as it makes the transition to Jefferson Starship. Explain how you first developed a relationship with Paul Kentner. Oh, I developed a relationship with Paul probably around 1963 when I was just a folk singer with a trio called David and Michaela. We played in San Jose, and Paul, I think, was going to San Jose State at the time and was hanging out and helping run the folk club down there. We just got together and hit it off. And so I, every time we came down to play that club, which is like about three or four times, 
I'd just hang at Paul's house and we'd sit up and pick guitars and banjos all night. And was it Paul who invited you to join? I guess it was like Marty who was just leaving Mar- or something? Marty had left. Yeah, well, I had left Quicksilver like about nine months before that. And I was just hanging out at Mickey Hart's ranch in his studios and while he was making his record. And there was one song on there that I thought Paul and Grace would sound really good singing harmony on. So I asked them if they wanted to come do that. And then they did come out and Grace ended up playing piano on it too. A song called Blind John the Guitar Player off of Mickey Hart's uh, Rolling Thunder album. I think it was shortly after that that Marty left and they were going out on the road and they needed somebody to to sing harmony with and that was me and that ended up being the last tour of jefferson airplane how was it that they morphed the name from airplane to starship explain that transition Hmm. you know it didn't really and nobody said this is the end of jefferson airplane it just kind of never played together again rca realized that that's what was happening and stopped paying our salaries (laughs) Hmm. and so paul and grace and i made this record called Baron Von Tollbooth and the Chrome Nun shortly after that, which was part of a record that Paul really owed them as a solo project. Lots of guests on that. Jerry, David Crosby. Oh, Jerry Crosby's on it. Jack and Yorma. Craig, Jack and Yorma. Craig Chiquiso, I think, is probably on it, too. Yep. Then Grace also owed them the album. So the same group of people that were on Grace's solo album, Manhole. And when those were done, we decided, well, it looks like there isn't going to be any Jefferson Airplane. What are we going to do? we might as well go out and promote Grace's album or something. What do we call it? And Paul had put on his Blows Against the Empire album. Everybody that played on it was called, it's the Jefferson Starship Crew. Mm. That was about hijacking the Starship. Right. And said, well, we probably should call it Jefferson Starship. And it seemed like a good idea. So It's interesting how it all worked out. And that's a name, Jefferson Starship, which has gone through a lot of evolution in terms of both band members and sound. And on the note of the current group, Kathy Richardson, the band's singer now for some time, I understand that Grace actually has given Kathy her blessing, and what, there's like some... Oh, yeah, Grace. No, she's great buddies. They, actually, we have some new recordings coming out, I believe, in February, and Grace actually contributed some lyrics to a song that Kathy and Jude wrote called It's About Time. They're friends. Grace and, and Kathy are friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. I mean, there's probably not a lot yeah. of, real, of rock bands that have that kind of thing where you have the legendary lead singer no longer in the band, but yet having a friendly relationship with the person who's kind of doing their no, no. role. Grace loves her. When Jefferson Airplane got their Lifetime Achievement Award at the Grammys, Grace insisted that it be her that sing with the band on the, the telecast. You know what's crazy is we were talking about the Grateful Dead earlier. You moved into a house in California. It was previously rented by Bob Weir and Pigpen, and you still live in that exact same house to this day. Is that well, true? It was 1970. In 1970, they were... I'm lo- speaking to you from that very house. As we speak, huh? Pigpen and Bobby lived here, and along with Tom Constantin, too. Right, so. the other keyboard dude who was in the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How crazy is that? And they lived there, and then you bought the house? Yeah, they were renting it. Yeah, I, I bought it. Novato, California. Yep. Still in the same place all these years later. 2020, it'll be 50 years I've been in this house. Who were you closest to in the Grateful Dead? Depends on what time, when. I would consider myself a friend of all of them, but I was pretty close to Mickey for a long time, yeah. you have any contact with Grace these days? Sure. She called me the other day, actually. She's doing visual art these days, right? She's still doing that, yeah. So some lyrics that she's contributed coming out in February, you said, probably. Right. To the next Jefferson uh, Starship record. Yes. Well, we'll go out with a live version of a Jefferson Starship classic featuring the lineup coming to the islands. And today we've been blessed to have David Freiberg from the band as our guest, headed back. Wonderful to be there. We appreciate you sharing some stories, especially with all that uh, vintage Hawaii history that you've got, recording and stuff Uh, here. Yeah. It'll be good to come make some more. (laughs) I appreciate it, David. Thanks for taking some time for us today. Okay, you bet, Dave. Thank you so much. Yeah.